say, man, we back again. You know what I'm saying? We back again to return to them guys. You know what I'm saying? Jesus up. Uh, let's go in prayer. Uh, God, we thank you for being a worthy God, a holy God, a loving God, a merciful God, gracious, compassionate, forgiving. Uh, we just thank you, Lord, for extending a way to us, Lord, by sending your son, Jesus, to live a life of perfection, Lord, and offer his life, Lord, as a sin offering, an atonement, a sacrifice for us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for the presence, Lord, the companionship of the Holy Ghost. We thank you for everything, God, and give you glory. Lord, I just ask you to give me your words to speak. I ask you to lead me and guide me uh, as I speak your word. Give me what to say. Let the inspiration be from you, Lord. Let it be your spirit speaking through me. Let me open up my mouth as your oracles, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray you just give me what to say and guide my speech, Lord. Have your way in this message. Have your way in word, in deed, and just do what you want to do, Lord. Send forth your glory. Send forth your word in power. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Help us to live this thing, man. Yeah, I got a couple. Uh, got a couple subjects, man. It's kind of early. It's like uh, it's like uh, it's like eight thirty, eight forty in the morning. You know, what I'm saying, got up early with this thing. You know what I mean? But uh, he been, you know, what I'm saying, he been dealing with me all week. I already, I already wanted to talk about persecution. And then he just dropped some other stuff in my spirit, man. I'm gonna talk about, I'm gonna talk about uh, the persecution that comes with the glory. You can't just operate in glory and not have persecution. You know what I mean? When you are light in darkness, you gonna attract bugs. You know what I mean? If fruit attracts fruit flies, <laughs> you know what I mean. So uh, you can't just operate in glory. And thinking ain't gonna draw persecution. Uh, then I'm gonna talk about uh, you know, we we talk about holiness, holiness. You see the H on the hat? Yeah, that's for holiness. <laughs> holiness unto the Lord, man. Stop playing. But uh, you know, we talk about holiness, holiness, holiness. How do you live holy though? You know, like if somebody just got saved, you know what I'm saying? Or how do you, you know, how do you really get in holiness? How do you uh, how do you live holy? How do you work that out? How do you put that in practice in the day to day? You know, what what's required? How do you do that? Is you just got to have a strong mind or, or what? Is it self-discipline? You know, what I mean, what, what does it take to really live holy, man? I'm going to get into that. And uh, what was my third subject? Oh, okay. Yeah, I got some little old, I got some little old relationship advice. Uh, if, if you a Christian and you, if I'm talking about you really saved, like you really on that on that path. I ain't talking about lukewarm. I ain't talking about double minded. You know what I mean? I, I, I know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you really saved. You really walking with Jesus. But uh, like I'm, 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 I'm gonna give you some game about that relationship thing. What, what you gotta look for and, and what you can't settle for. You know, you see Christians out here dating people that's, that ain't really into it like that. That's a no go. If you really serious about your walk, you know, backsliding ain't no joke. Uh, and then I just got like some random subjects on uh, part four. So we finna get into it, man. The first thing I want to talk about is persecution. Uh, yeah, the first thing I want to talk about is persecution, man. The glory of God, when the glory of God is on your life, it's going to bring persecution. And I, I want to show y'all something about Jesus that the Lord has showed me. He showed me this a while back. But uh, let's, let's go to John 2 and 4. When Jesus turned the water to wine or his mom, remember, this is his first miracle. You know, he was just a regular dude. He was a carpenter. He was holy, but he wasn't just, he wasn't just, he hadn't started his ministry. To, to my knowledge, you know, he wasn't doing no preaching, teaching. He wasn't doing no miracles, but he was holy and he, he was obedient, but he was just like a regular man, a regular holy dude. And then he got baptized in water 
you know, this is at the beginning of his ministry. He got baptized in water. Then the Holy Ghost came upon him to, uh, to anoint him for the work. Then he went into the wilderness, fasted 40 days, was tested and tried. The devil tempted him. Uh, the angels ministered to him. And then he came back in the power of the spirit. So now this is his first miracle in John chapter two, when he turned the water to wine. But it's, it's funny if you look at what he say, though. So he was just doing his thing, right? He had his disciples with him because uh, when he got baptized, John the Baptist pointed him out. You know, this is the Lamb of God. This, you know, come to take away the sins of the world. And uh, some of his disciples began to follow Jesus. Um, I think it was what, Peter and John or Andrew, something like that. Uh, they began to follow Jesus. It's in John chapter one. I think it was Andrew and... Uh, Andrew and Philip, I think, uh, left John the Baptist and went to follow Jesus. It's in John chapter one, though. But John chapter two, verse four. So, uh, you know, they they told Jesus mom at the wedding that they didn't have no wine. And Jesus's mom told Jesus because she knew that he could do something about that. You know, this is his first recorded miracle. Now, I don't know if he had already done miracles before this or I don't know how, but his mom knew that he could do something about this. So in verse four, Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Now, when he talk about his hour, he talk about the hour of his death. He talk about the hour of his death. You know what I mean? But um, he said, mine hour is not yet come because it was the time for him to start his ministry. You know what I mean? At the age of 30, you know, 30 was a significant time. Uh, David began to reign as king. David began to reign as king at the age of 30, king of Judah. And uh, he began to reign at the age of 30. Um. Uh, Joseph got out of prison and, and, and did his ministry. He, you know, he came into his rightful place at the age of 30 and Jesus began his ministry at 30. So, um, you know, 30, 30 was, yeah, I kind of be studying numbers that I get from the Bible. 30 is also a time for mourning. I think when Aaron died, uh, they mourned for him 30 days. So I, 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 I look at 30. Uh, I'm going to go back to numbers probably on part four of this. But uh, yeah, 30 was like the, the uh, designated period of mourning. And it's also a significant, like a destiny number. People stepped into their destiny at the age of 30. David stepped into his kingship at 30. Joseph stepped into his, uh, his uh, destiny at 30. You know what I mean? Jesus stepped into his ministry at 30. So it was the time for his ministry, his glory, the miracles but he said, it ain't my hour yet, which I believe he talking about his death. But check this out. His ministry and the glory and the miracles led to the persecution that led to his death. You know what I mean? And all this was, it was ordained of God. But anyway, we finna deal with this hour. He said, Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. And then I'm going to skip down to John chapter two, verse, um, verse 11. It says this beginning of miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. And then in John one, it says the word became flesh and we beheld his glory that is of the only begotten son of God. So manifesting your glory, it causes people to believe. He said these people won't believe unless they see signs and wonders in John chapter four. But him manifesting forth his glory, it caused people to believe on him. 
but it also brought persecution. So those are the two reactions. Either you're going to believe or you're going to hate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, a lot of, yeah, I'm, I'm going to talk about that too, but a lot of the persecution had to do with envy because you want, you got people who want to follow him. They want people to follow them. So when they saw the multitudes following Jesus, you know, it was actually envy that was in their heart. They didn't want to become part of the following. So, you know, they, they persecuted, they persecuted them. You know what I mean? They didn't want to become, they was in leadership. So they wanted the people to follow them. When the people start following Jesus, it was a big problem for them. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, it was, it was a problem. But anyway, the, the glory of God being manifested led to persecution. Let me show you something else. John chapter 12, verse 23, talking about this hour. Talking about the hour of his death. Now, in the other Gospels, when he's in the Garden of Gethsemane, you know, he's saying, you know, let this cup pass from me if, if possible. Uh, but nevertheless, you know, not my will, but thy will. But in John 12, 23, this what he say. He say, uh, you, you don't see no, you don't see no wavering in the gospel of John. You know, Jesus was human. So he didn't, if, if it was a pot, if it was possible for him to get out of that and God still make a way of salvation and, and all that, he would have chose that because he had to go through some real suffering, but it wasn't no other way. So, but John 12, 23, it says, uh, and Jesus answered them saying, the hour is come that the son of man should be glorified. Now he talking about his death to get the resurrection. He had to go through the death and the crucifixion. So now his hour has come. Now his hour has come. The hours come that the son of man might be glorified. But what led to that? The glory being demonstrated during his ministry was what led to all the persecution, which is what led to the cross. And then John 17, one, he says, uh, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, father, the hour is come glorify thy son that thy son also may glorify thee. So all the glory that goes to Jesus goes to the father. You know, that's another reason we pray in his name. Cause when the son is, uh, when the son is glorified, it brings glory to the father. You know, it's, it ain't no one taken away from the other. The more Jesus is glorified, the more the father is glorified. You know what I mean? So, it ain't like somebody stealing his glory or nothing like that. Jesus was a perfect represent representation of the father, but, um, persecution when the glory is on your life, man, it, it leads to persecution. You know, all who desire to live godly will suffer persecution on some level, you know, especially the more glory that's on your life, the more persecution. You know, but I also studied Peter and Paul like they had parallel ministries, but Paul's persecution was a was a little bit more hectic than Peter's, though. You know, Paul's persecution was a little bit more hectic than Peter's persecution. Like even when when Paul came to Jerusalem, they was trying to kill him. You know what I mean? They weren't trying to kill Peter like that. Peter went through persecution, too. But but Paul's persecution was. Like he had a, 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 a double portion though. <laughs> like they, they was really after, after Paul, man. Uh, you know, but Paul might've had some, some skills and some qualities and some talents. Now they both had the same anointing, but, but I think Paul had, had something else that, that Peter didn't have, but Paul also had persecution of the church in his background. So that could be a reason why he had a double dose and, and he was actually a Pharisee. So when you was on the devil's side doing the devil's work, going hard for the devil, and then you flip the script, you know, uh, it's probably the devil probably hates you that much more. He hate anybody that's, that's doing the work of the Lord in purity. But when you was really going hard for the devil and then you flip the script, 
you know, he probably hates you that much more. And plus, Paul had persecuted the church before. So, uh, you know, he, he kind of got a double dose when it came to reaping that in return. But I think he also had talents and uh, I think he was more intellectually gifted probably than Peter, though. So, you know, God used all his intellectual gifts for the kingdom, too. And and that that's probably another reason for extra persecution. But. Uh, but, yeah, man, when the glory, when the glory is on your life, man, it, it brings it brings uh, persecution, man. So, you know, I was thinking about, you know, uh when it comes to, to the gifts of the spirit and stuff like that and signs, wonders and miracles, like, you know, that, that it's an awesome thing to walk in that, you know, and I, I think we should seek God, you know, covet, covet earnestly the best gifts, you know, and I show you a more excellent way, you know, talking about walking in love, but also the gifts and the signs, wonders, miracles, all that, you know, I think it's a beautiful thing and I think everybody should seek God for that. But but you you got to know what come with that, you know, person. And matter of fact, if you look at the ministry of Jesus, like there was times when Jesus did miracles and he told a person not to say nothing. You know, what I mean, he took a person out of town, did the miracle, said, you know, don't don't go back in town telling them, you know, what happened. You know, he raised a girl from the dead and he said, you know, don't you know, don't. Don't don't say nothing about it. You know what I'm saying? Let them think she was sleeping, woke up, you know, like, like, don't don't say nothing about it. Like, why would Jesus not want you to brag on, on, on what he did? It brings glory to the son. It brings glory to the father. Why would he not want you to proclaim that? You know, I, I think it's because he was after he did the miracle, like he. He was trying to keep down the, the persecution. Like, why, 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 why would you not want want it to be proclaimed? You know what I mean? Like, he knows that the more the more glory that's displayed, the more persecution. I believe that's the only reason that he would try to tell somebody not to tell nobody what I did for you. You know what I mean? It's because of the persecution. And then if you look at Lazarus. You know, that that was such a glorious miracle to raise him from the dead after being dead four days that the persecution was so strong that they not only was talking about killing Jesus, but they was talking about killing Lazarus. <laughs> they was talking about killing Lazarus, too, because of how glorious of a miracle that was, you know, and then he healed the blind man. Uh, What's that? John chapter nine. He healed the blind man and they kicked him out of the synagogue. You know what I mean? So, you know, a lot of time they got mad at the people that, that got the miracle. You know what I mean? So, uh, yeah, man, when, when Jesus was the more he manifested forth his glory through signs, wonders, miracles and calling out the Pharisees and, and all that, the more it strengthened the persecution, the heavier the persecution was. It's even in the word that, uh, like when, when the Jews, uh, was in certain places like Jesus, like, uh, go around the other way, or it says something about he, um, like he no longer walked among, among the Jews. Like he, he kind of went in private instead of just being so public because the persecution, you know, they, that they, they, they was ready to kill him and, and, uh, it's, it says something about he no longer walked among Jewry or something like that in the, uh, in the King James, but, um, uh, the persecution was real and Jesus did what he could to, uh, to, to like keep the persecution down. Jesus did what he could to keep the persecution down, but he couldn't, you know, he couldn't fulfill his ministry and do the works that God would have him to do. And, uh, he couldn't avoid persecution though, but the manifesting of the glory is what brought forth the persecution. The persecution is what led to the cross. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, it's the his death is what led to his resurrection. You know what I mean? So it, it all had to happen. It had to be. But uh, my point is, the manifestation of glory leads to persecution. So the more you want to go hard for God, 
uh, especially when it comes to signs, wonders, and miracles and stuff like that. I feel the Holy Ghost, man, I'm telling you, like, <laughs> hey, you just got to be ready for that, though. And uh, but but let, 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 let's go into this, man. I'm just I'm just talking. Uh, let me read first Peter four. Almost every chapter in Peter talks about persecution. But this was the verse that I really wanted to use, though. It's a part in almost every chapter of first Peter that talk about persecution. But this is what I want to read 12 through 14. 1 Peter verse 4, verse 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice inasmuch as ye are partakers of Christ's sufferings that when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad with exceeding joy. This is it right here, verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. When the spirit of God and the spirit of glory rest upon you, it's not a strange thing to be reproached, insulted, whatever, persecuted for Christ. He says on their part, he is evil spoken of, spoken bad of, but on your part, he is glorified. So when God is being glorified in your life and the spirit of God, which is the spirit of glory, rests on you, it, it'll bring persecution. You know what I mean? Um... I got something on here in Daniel. It talk about the persecution. I'm going to go on and go to that. Uh, Daniel chapter 11, verse 33 through 35 and Daniel chapter 12, verse 10. But my point in this was, you know, in the end time, as we get closer to the, yeah, this is the end time. But we know that the persecution against the church is going to increase, you know, as the as we get closer to the Antichrist kingdom, the uh, the new world order, you know, the, the final world empire under the leadership and guidance of the Antichrist, all this, the persecution is all going to increase. And uh, let, let me read this, 30, 33 through 35. It says, and they that understand among the people shall instruct many, yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame, by captivity, and by spoil many days. We know it's probably that that if you're not already suffering persecution, it's going to be worldwide systematic persecution for that last three and a half years. But it's already persecution going on in other places. Now, when they shall fall, they shall be hoping or helped with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries. Or that is with hypocrisy, not not sincere. Um, and some of them of understanding shall fall, talking about the Christians, to try them and to purge and to make them white even to the time of the end, because it is yet for a time appointed. And then I'm gonna read Daniel twelve ten. Many shall be purified and made white, uh oh, and tried. That's the persecution. And try, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So that's persecution on the end time church. You got to know that it's coming. But check this out, though. It ain't going to be no, the closer we get to the end time, it ain't going to be no middle ground. It ain't going to be no lukewarm. Either you're going to be with them or against them because your life going to be on the line. So, you know, lukewarm Christianity is going to be out. Uh, what they call nominal Christians, just naming the name of Christ or Christian, that's going to be out. Uh, all the all that, all the faking and shaking going to be out. And uh, all the double-minded going to be out. Like either you're going to be with them or you're going to be against them because your life, your freedom, your life, all that is going to be on the line. So it's going to be people that's really with them or not. And the ones that's really with them, 
it's gonna it's gonna be true Christians. You know what I'm saying? They they going they gonna have the power of God. They're gonna be filled with the Holy Ghost. They're gonna be about holiness, righteousness, godliness, sanctification. You know, they they gonna really be in love with Jesus. You know what I mean? And 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 they gonna be ride or die. You know what I mean? It's, it, the church going to look like what it's supposed to look like. But at the same time, you know, uh, it's going to be it's going to be real life persecution, though. You know, people being incarcerated, people uh, probably tortured, you know, what I mean, uh, people being killed, slaughtered. You know, what I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's going to be real. And we, we getting there. You know, America, we just we got it good over here, you know. Uh, when that type of persecution hit America, you know, it's over with, you know, it's over with, you know, cause you know, we, we, we like the last of the last, uh, yeah, we like the last of the last man. But anyway, uh, one thing I noted that persecution is based on occasion and opportunity. Let, let, let's go to uh, Jesus, Matthew 4, 11, and then Luke 4, 13. I think it's the same thing. Let me just go to Luke 4, 13. Because it said the devil left him till an opportune time. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. So uh, the devil can't be on you all the time. You know what I mean? Persecution is based on opportunity and occasion. Just like I was saying in America, uh, you know, the devil hates us real Christians in America. The devil hates us just as much as the Christians in China, just as much as the Christians in Afghanistan, Pakistan, just as much as Christians in the Middle East, Iran, just as much as Christians in North Korea, you know, the devil hate us just as much as them, but due to the government structure and the hand of God on the nation or the hand of God that was previously on the nation, like the covering of God, the power of God being manifest through the government of that nation, you know what I'm saying? Uh, or restraining the government of the nation, you know what I mean? Uh, he don't have the same opportunity. He don't have the same occasion to persecute everybody the same way. You know what I mean? Like one thing I also learned, you know, when you ducked off, you know, if you hiding in a cave somewhere like a monk, you know, the devil ain't got the opportunity to really persecute you like that. But when you get in the mix, it's different. You know what I'm saying? When, when you get in the mix around people and they know what you stand for, you know what I mean? Um, uh, that provides more of an opportunity for the devil to, you know, run his little games and stuff. But at the same time, in a nation like America, the devil don't have the, he don't have the occasion to persecute you through the government. Now he trying to get it there. Don't get it twisted. He trying to get it there every day, but you know, we still have a restraining hand over the nation as far as uh, systematic persecution of Christians. And there is persecution, but it's not unto death. It's not unto imprisonment because of the, the hand of God on the nation. And when I say the hand of God on the nation, I don't mean like God is in support of the nation. But remember, you know, we were founded on godly principles. So to be a nation that's founded on godly principles, to become a nation that persecutes Christians through death and imprisonment, you know, that takes a process. So, you know, we're, we're not at that point in the process. That's my point. So, uh, so yeah, he don't have the same occasion and opportunity to persecute Christians in this nation like he does in some other nations, you know what I mean? But he, he sure would if he could, but he just don't have the occasion and the opportunity. And, you know, the, the devil comes at, uh, I think one of them other translations, it says the devil, the devil ended all the temptation and departed from him uh, to like left him till a more opportune time or something like that. You know what I mean? But yeah, the devil always looking for opportunity and occasion to persecute you on a personal level. You know what I mean? And uh, the more you in the mix, the more he can come at you. If you ducked off, you hid somewhere. He can't get at you, but you can't do the work of God. You can prepare for the work of God, but you can't do the work of God 
you know, ducked off. I mean, you, you could do what I'm doing, you know what I mean? But God going to always put you in the mix. You know, you, you not, you know, you, you, you can do so much in a corner, but you got to get in the mix, you know what I mean? But it's good to use every avenue, you know what I mean? But yeah, when you ducked off, it's time for preparation, testing, when you when you when you isolated, when you separated, you know, you're going to be tested. But that's also, you know, it, it's just on a personal level. You know, it ain't like temptation in front of you. You know, what I mean, but just on a mental level, you, you, you know, what I'm saying you get tested. But then on the spiritual level, that's your time to soak in God and get prepared and and get strengthened. Man, that 30 minutes passed quick. Uh, golly, that thing passed quick. Um, but yeah, you know what I mean? When you, when you isolated or separated, you know, that's your time to really soak in God and really prepare, you know what I mean? But you also be like mentally tested, you know what I mean? But, you know, you can do a nice work from isolation because of technology, you know what I mean? But, you know, it's God's desire to put us in the mix, you know, let people see how we live and let people see how we move, how we function, how we carry ourselves you know what I mean? And demonstrate that gospel and preach that gospel. You know what I mean? Touch people person to person. You know what I mean? Each one teach one. You know what I mean? All that type of stuff. You know what I mean? But, uh, but yeah, persecution is based on occasion and opportunity. If he had the opportunity, if he had the ability, we'd be persecuted over here just like over there somewhere. You know what I mean? But it's, it's by the grace of God. But it's going to come to that one day. You know, so you, you got to be, you got to prepare yourself. You know what I mean? You got to prepare yourself, man. Uh, the the suffering come with the glory. The persecution come with the glory. You know, uh, one thing I wanted to talk about was the attitude behind persecution. A lot like, especially when you brag on God and you really rep Jesus like that and you really in the God like that. Uh, a lot of people feel like, you know, the attitude towards uh, a Christian that really trusts in God, really rely on God. You know, if they see you suffering or they see you going through something, they feel like, uh, God, I was backslid at the time, man. But, but I used to rep Christ real heavy on the job though. You know, that's when the anointing would come on me and stuff like that. And, uh, and, uh, God showed me it worked. You know what I'm saying? Like the the way people feel like if, if you ever suffering or you going through something like people feel like, well, he always talking about God, you know, let God help him. You know why? Why God ain't, ain't save you from this? Why God let this happen to you? And it's the same attitude they had to Jesus on the cross, man. Uh, on the cross, you know, they felt like uh, what was they saying? They was like, uh, uh. He said he was the son of God. You know, uh, if God's with him, let God deliver him. You know, uh, if, if you the son of God, come down from the cross. If you the son of God, save yourself. <clears throat> but it was one scripture in Matthew 27, 43. Because we not going, they not going to look at us like that. Like if you the son of God, save yourself. But that's, that's how they looked at him. But it was one scripture, though. He said uh, he trusted in God. Let him deliver him if he will have him. For he said, I'm the son of God. But they feel that way about us, too. Uh, he he, he trusts in God so much. Let, let God save him. Let God help him. Uh, why, why God ain't stop him from going through this? He always talking about God. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the attitude behind persecution. It's like you steady bragging on somebody. You trust in somebody. So when something happened to you, if something happened to you, you know, they, they feel like, well, he always talking about God. Let God save him. Let God help him. Why God ain't do this for her? She always talking about God. You know what I'm saying? Like like that type of thing. Like that's the attitude behind persecution. You know what I'm saying? When you let it be known that your faith is in him. If you going through a, a tough circumstance or something, then people feel like, well, why, you know, let God deliver him. You know, why God didn't save him from that? Why God didn't stop him from going through that? Let him call on God. He always talking about God. You know what I'm saying? Like, that. that's that, just a hater. You know what I'm saying? Just a hater. But <laughs> that's how, that's the attitude behind persecution. He just showed me that at the job one day, man. Uh, 
Yeah, and, and they was on Jesus when he was on the cross, shaking their head at him. He saved others, save himself. You know what I'm saying? And Jesus said, you're going to say to me, physician, heal thyself. You know what I mean? Jesus knew everything, you know what I'm saying, with the persecution, man. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, uh, oh, yeah, and then the last thing I'm going to say about persecution, man, a lot of it, a lot of it is envy, man. A lot of persecution is envy. Like I said, man, they, you know, the the, the reason they really hated them was because the glory of God, it, it attracted crowds. I mean, you the son of God, you out of this place, some glory that we never seen before. And that's what Jesus did. And that had a lot to do, not just that, but his teaching and preaching was, was with power and with authority. You know what I mean? And his revelation was, was different. You know what I mean? But um, he attracted crowds and that's what really made the Pharisees. That's really what set them off. You know, Jesus was just showing who he was, the son of God. And people saw who he was and they followed him. And, uh, and you know, the, the Pharisees, they hated that, man. They hated when, the, didn't they say the whole world is going after him? You know, they, they seen the movement of the crowds. You know, he had the ability to move a crowd, man. And, and that's what, that's what made them envy him. Matthew 27, 18 it says he knew, Pilate knew that for envy they had delivered him or turned him in or, you know, turned him over to Pilate. Like, it was jealousy, bro. Like, you know, he had the crowds. And then if you look at Acts 13.45, Acts 17.5, Paul went through the same thing. And uh, it says they envied him. And it always had to do with the multitudes. You know, Paul had the ability to move a crowd. And uh, and they envied him because they was concerned about the people, the numbers, even in Acts chapter 20. You know, he said uh, it's, it's false teachers going to come in. And he said, even this going to arise from some of y'all false teachers. But he said to draw away disciples after them. You know, what I mean, people be wanting a following. People be wanting a crowd. People be wanting a following. And nowadays, when you tell people what they want to hear, you know, you preach that easy gospel, that what they call it, that that seeker friendly, that user friendly. <laughs> you know what I mean? You ain't talking about dying to yourself. You ain't talking about crucifying the flesh. You ain't talking about separation from the world. You know, you preach that easy, that easy gospel, man, that 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 user friendly gospel. You know, people will follow that. People want to hear, people want to get, they want to get as much as they can without having to put in no work. You know what I mean? People want to get something for nothing. You know what I mean? And, you know, salvation is free, but then again, it ain't. It's going to cost you, you. And uh, I preached a sermon one time called The High Cost of the Free Gift. <laughs> yeah, I preached a sermon one time called uh the high cost of the free gift you know what i mean and uh people want something for nothing but uh that's not really what christianity is now you can't earn your salvation so it's free on that note but it yeah it costs you something yeah and unless you just get saved and go right to heaven you get saved right before you die then it's truly a free gift. But as long as you live in this life, I mean, it, it ain't nothing that you can't afford, but it do cost you something. It don't cost you no money, but it costs you, 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 it's a trading of the lives. I receive his life, but I give up my life. And, and now I live the life that he leads me to live. You know what I mean? So it's, it costs you something, man. But, uh, but yeah, people be wanting to crowd. People be wanting the crowd and they, they want followers. And then if somebody else got something going on and they got followers, it can make another person jealous. You know what I mean? And that, that's what it was with Jesus. That's what it was with Paul and the, and the Jews. That's why they hated him because the Jewish leadership, especially when Paul started pulling in the Gentiles, especially when he started pulling in the Gentiles, you know, they, they really had a problem with that, man. Acts 
13.45 and Acts 17.5. And then the last thing I'm going to say about persecution, I'm talking about the end time, the Antichrist, the beast uh, empire. I believe you're going to see three types, just like when COVID, just like when COVID hit the earth, you know what I mean? You got people who, who, who didn't get it at all. Then you, uh, by the grace of God, I never got it. I, I had got sick during COVID time, but it was, it was like something with my respiratory called pleurisy. But I believe that had something to do with the environment of the job that I was working. It was so much dust and stuff. And I was smoking. I think that was a sign from, from God too. Cause this was in, uh, this was in 2020. I got sick like in April and then I went to the hospital like in early May. I thought I had COVID though, but, but it wasn't COVID though. And, uh, but I had a cough and, uh, the cough didn't go away though. Like, and then it got to the point where like when I breathe in, nah, it got to the point that when I cough, it like hurt my side. Like every time I cough, I felt like it, it was a pain in my side when I coughed. And, uh, and then I think I had, I had like, I think I had chest, like some chest congestion. Yeah. I thought I had COVID, but, uh, it was a condition called pleurisy is basically just inflammation between your lung and the lung wall or something like that. And sometimes when you breathe, it can hurt. Or when you cough, it could hurt. And, uh, yeah, I thought I had COVID though, but, uh, but I think now that I look back at it, that was, I had just started back smoking weed in like February, 2020. I started back smoking weed and drinking and then I got sick in April. So I think it was a warning sign from God, like, nah. And then I, I think it was cause of my job, the dust and all that in the air. And then on that same job, but I was still smoking. I, I started having to use an asthma pump and uh, just, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, you know, but hey, when you start going down that route, you know, but then I had stopped smoking weed for like a couple months and then I went another month like the next year without smoking weed, but I was still having to like, you know what I mean? Use an asthma pump because the, the dust was terrible. So I, I was really, I really think it was the dust of the environment at the job. But I think now that I look back at it, all of a sudden I ain't had lung problems or respiratory issues since I was like a teen, since I was like 12, something, you know what I mean? So then that stuff started coming back. Like what the heck? So I think it was the job, the atmosphere, the dust, but I also think it was God trying to warn me since I had picked back up, started back smoking and stuff like that, you know? But, uh, but anyway, oh yeah, but I thought I had COVID, but I didn't. So they just gave me some medicine and then I, I, uh, I took medicine for like five days and, and that was it. That was that. But, uh, but I still had to later on, I had to start back getting an asthma pump because I started losing my breath on some days, uh, in that, in that dusty environment. But, uh, but yeah, but I didn't have COVID, but anyway, COVID it, it's, it, it show you how the persecution going to go. You know what I'm saying? When the persecution hit is worldwide systematic persecution. You got some people or matter of fact, some people caught COVID. Some people didn't catch COVID. Some people caught COVID and got over it. Some people caught COVID and died. That's how the persecution going to be. You know, you got Christians that's going to totally escape it because God might have a prepared place an appointed place or God hides them, you know, God will hide them or he'll direct them, you know what I'm saying? To appointed places and they can escape it. You know what I mean? Then you got people that's going to be hit by the persecution. They probably going to be taken captive, imprisoned. And if you in prison, you probably going to be tortured on some level. It's probably going to be some type of torture, you know what I mean? But they're not going to be killed. Then you got people that's going to be killed. Some going to go to captivity. Some is going to be the sword and some are going to totally escape it, you know, by the supernatural leading, guiding, hiding of the Holy Ghost. You know, either he'll have a place prepared for you. He'll direct you to a certain place or he'll supernaturally hide you or he'll direct you to a certain place where you won't be uh, imprisoned or killed. 
And then some is going to be imprisoned and probably tortured along with that. And uh, and then some is going to be, you know what I'm saying, going to get their heads chopped off. You know what I mean? So that's probably how the persecution going to go, uh, you know, during the Antichrist, Beast, Kingdom, all that. So, you know what I mean? But, yeah, you, you got to be prepared. That, that just come with the war. Once you choose sides, it's up. It's it's a warfare, you know what I mean? The, 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 this this is warfare, man. Once you choose sides, you got to be prepared. Now, hopefully it don't go like that, you know what I mean? Hopefully, you know what I mean, you suffer as least persecution as possible and can make an impact for the Lord, but you got to be prepared. You got to be built for it. You got to be prepared, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? You, you got to be built for it. You got to expect it. And just pray for God to get you through it. But yeah, the glory, the glory of God brings forth persecution.